Okay, in this week's Weather Extra, we're going to talk about how wonderfully weird we started out the month of June. Take a look at June 5th. If you were driving on the Bay Bridge or really anywhere on the morning of June 5th in the Bay Area, you encountered some pretty good rain. In fact, we broke records. Think about this for a second. We're in the depths of the most severe drought on record for much of Northern California at this point. We just entered the month of the year that is typically among the driest of the entire year. It's not supposed to rain here in June or July at all. Yet to start out this June, we broke records for rainfall. And it wasn't only San Francisco. Wait till I show you the totals that fell in the mountains of Marin. This requires some explanation. And in order to do that, we're going to take a look at an old friend, something that's become far more important over the last decade or so for us to become familiar with, recognizing and that's atmospheric rivers, because this actually was one of those. And I'm going to show you how, and we'll see why it's such an important part of why we were able to start off the month of June so wonderfully weird. The first thing we noticed came on uh, Saturday. This was June 4th, the sky above Oakland. Look how weird the clouds look. See a little bit of a waviness through them? Some of the clouds are even stationary. Those are those weird lenticular clouds that form over mountain ranges. They look like UFOs. You only get clouds like that when there are strong winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere interacting with mountain ranges. It looked weirder from the top of the Salesforce Tower. Same day, same afternoon, different vantage point. That's looking south. Take a look at the clouds out here. Look at the bottoms of them. Really weird looking waves. Um, those clouds, Asperitus, Undulatus. It's a newly named cloud, actually. It's the first time the World Meteorological Organization designated a new name for clouds since the 1950s because we've gotten so much better at recognizing these things over the last few years. So those clouds were a sign that something was afoot in the atmosphere. And in order to get clouds like that, you could actually see it on the satellite imagery when you take a look at the high-resolution view of us from space. You see all the clouds coming in from the west? Everything is moving, except for the clouds underneath that are stationary. Look at them. They're like straight vertical lines in the clouds. Can you see them on there? Higher clouds up here moving quickly from west to east. Underneath those at the lower levels, stationary lines of clouds. It's like waves through the atmosphere creating those. In fact, it was gravity waves that were creating those. One of the more fascinating aspects of what was happening here in the Bay Area on Saturday. Because those winds were coming in to California so fast. When they hit our local mountains, the speed of the winds force the air up very quickly. That's how you create a cloud. If you take air that's relatively warm, force it to rise very fast, a cloud will develop. That's why we were getting those clouds over the mountains. But in a scenario like this where the clouds develop so quickly, the tops of them cool very fast. And once that air gets cold enough, it starts sinking and it will sink down the other side of the mountain. And then when it sinks far enough, it compresses, it warms up, and then it starts to rise again on its own because air that's been forced to warm wants to rise back up. Now you don't need mountains to rise. Now what you've done is you've started this pattern where you've created a wave in the atmosphere. That's the scenario that develops weird looking clouds like lenticular clouds or that asperitus undulatus. And this was a clue that this weekend for June 4th and June 5th, had some very unique aspects in the atmosphere. And if you looked off the coast, you didn't necessarily see it in the clouds, but look at the upper level winds. They were screaming across the Pacific very fast. That explains why we were getting all those unique clouds, but it also explains why the atmosphere was able to tap into something else on here. If we get rid of the winds, there's your atmospheric river. That's your narrow ribbon of confined higher amounts of water vapor that was getting pulled out of the subtropics and pointed at us. And there was so much energy in the atmosphere, it was able to reach down into the subtropics and pull up that fine narrow ribbon and point it towards the Bay Area. And as a result, we were seeing some impressive amounts of available water to create rain here. If you took all of the water in the atmosphere right off the coast, the weekend of June 4th and 5th, took it all and forced it all down to the ground, you'd have about one to two inches of standing water. It's a fun meteorology term for that. We call it precipitable water. It comes up a lot in forecasting, but it's a really unique way to gauge how much water there is. But the more important takeaway from this is, for the first week of June, that much precipitable water off the coast of California for this time of year, that was about 200% of average. The only way you get a number like that 
is from an atmospheric river, which is what this was. And we've gotten much better at categorizing atmospheric rivers over the last several years. There's now a scale for them. It goes from one to five. Here at home, we weren't really all that far up on the scale. We were at about a two, which is moderate. And moderate atmospheric rivers are actually more beneficial than anything else, especially if you're in a drought, because they can deliver better rainfall totals than you would have gotten from that storm if it did not have an atmospheric river as part of its makeup. Here's the record that we broke in San Francisco. On June 5th, we got a little under a quarter of an inch of rain. That is not a blockbuster storm by any means, unless you're in June. Because for June 5th, the record which had stood since 1934 was 15 hundredths of an inch of rain. That's it. That was the most we'd ever gotten on June 5th. And that 23 hundredths of an inch of rain also stands out because if you look at the month of June as a whole, on average for June, we only get two tenths of an inch of rain for the whole month. So in an 18 hour period, we were able to surpass that. That's what atmospheric rivers can do. And this is also a great way to come away with some perspective on how the rainfall behaves here throughout the course of the year. We really rely on January and February. We didn't get any rain in February this year. So by an odd turn of events, we got more rain in June in 2022 than we did in February. We should have gotten four and a half inches. We got nothing. So a little bit of perspective there. By the way, the story's not better for July. July, the average is zero. And then you can see as we go into the fall and winter, the rainfall comes back. That's kind of the classic Mediterranean climate. Just a couple of other numbers to express how uniquely impressive this early June rain event was. Up on Mount Tam, and that's the view behind me here, you can actually see there's a little radar dome up there on West Peak from Mount Tam. Check the rain gauge just below that on that slope of Mount Tam. We got just under three inches of rain. And that also translated down into the valley out there. Mill Valley got nine tenths of an inch of rain. When you get numbers like that, that are as oddly impressive for this time of year as they are, it requires a bit of an explanation. And that's the value now of being able to recognize, categorize, label, forecast atmospheric rivers. And that's the imagery that's been shared from the Scripps Institute down in San Diego on their homepage. They're the leading organization that's really helped us kind of wrap our heads around these things. So when they happen, we're going to include them as an important part of the forecast and add that layer of context to help us understand some of the more significant rainfall events. By the way, every significant rainfall event, every significant flooding event in California has been driven in by an atmospheric river. So the more we get acquainted with these things, the better. All right, that's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagan will be in next week with another one.